Do, 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 do. It just disappeared too, right? And it's got the blinds drawn in. That's really anxious, aren't you? Oh, not sure. I can't figure out who it is. You ready to get out of the gate, Tom? You want to get going, don't you? <laughs> You okay back there, Peter? <laughs> Are we good? All right. Excellent. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the October 1st, 2019 meeting of the Weather Seal Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, Mr. Roberts, would you help us? Uh, Chairman Harley. Here. Vice Chairman Roberts here. Clerk Allard is not. Mr. Hughes. Nope. Um, Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Mr. Hamicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Yes. Ms. Murphy. Here. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So uh, my math has it at 10, 9 participate, and I haven't got a clue who was the last alternate who sat out, but would anybody care to sit out this evening? For the, uh, I, I, I could sit out. That's okay. Well, they can, thank you. They can take turns. You could, you could do that too. Two. You could take turns with them. But if the first one is actually going to get... If you would step or not participate when the vote comes, I'd appreciate it. There's sure. only going to be one. All right. Uh, the first item is 3.1, a public hearing for application number 2018-19-Z, CMRK. And this is for a, um, a clothing collection container. Peter? Uh, we received an email on Monday uh, that the uh, co collection uh, unit has been removed from the site and the application has been withdrawn. So, so no action required, right? Correct. All right. So moving on to application 3.2, not application 3.2, 3.2 is the item number. Application number 2022-19-Z, Colvest Weathersfield LLC, seeking a site plan and design review for a change of use in, a, in accordance with section 10.1.D.1, for, for, uh, changing uh, from retail to office at 1080 Silestein Highway. Is the applicant here? Would you be kind enough to join us? Uh, give us your name. Take a few minutes to describe sure. what well, you have in mind. My name is Peter Lapointe. I'm a project manager for the Colvest Group. We have offices at 1259 East Columbus and Springfield. Uh, we own the uh, CVS Plaza on the Silestine, which is uh, 1078 and 1080 Silestine Highway. Uh, 1080 is the multiple tenant building. Uh, the unit we're talking about, and I think it was singled out on the prints in your packet, is the end unit. It literally is 1080 Silestine. The building actually runs 1080 to 1090. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, Starbucks is 1090. Uh, we're requesting a change of use. Uh, it was a uh, retail outlet. It's being, uh, we have a signed lease now with a firm called Quest Diagnostics. Uh, they, uh, they would lease this 2,400 square foot space for a patient service uh, center. They're not a healthcare or a hospital or clinic type service. They draw blood and uh, people can leave urine samples there uh, they, these are, uh, from there it's sent to a lab for analysis and then reported back to the physician or the employer or the whatever group is requesting the, the sample be taken. So it's done for, for work, for uh, physical exam, for sports, uh, general medical diagnostics and uh, patient monitoring with people who have serious illness. Uh, the, uh, we have, what, 183 parking spaces on site, so we have more than enough parking. Uh, we think it's a good mix because 
Uh, they're not going to compete with the other tenants on site who have peak hours later in the day. The only other tenant that has early morning hours is Starbucks. Uh, so by the time Chipotle fires up, these people have uh, basically slowed down for the day. Uh, we've had them uh, in North Haven for a number of years uh, as a tenant. They're a good tenant. And it's a good mix. It's a, a, an allowable use under the zone. Uh, and we have, uh, there'll be no other changes made to the site. No exterior changes to the building. Thank you. The only thing, so there is a uh, memo in the file from Peter, and the only thing it raises is the parking. And uh, just because I didn't hear you say it, the required number is 61-ish yes, states. Sir. And you have 180, so not an issue, which is exactly what Peter said. Questions of the applicant? George? Yeah, uh, why so many? Not that you care. I'm happy for you. Uh, but why so many quest facilities in Liberty? I don't know. Right here. And there's another one. I do, down I do not know. You, you are a central location. You're very convenient uh, to four people from other communities, from neighboring communities. So it's uh, with, with the, with the uh, Berlin Turnpike 91 and the Silas Dean Highway, it makes it. Uh, I'm sure Quest would not be requesting or doing such a thing. It's a big, it's not small. No. Uh, you know, if they didn't need it, I'm just kind of curious. If that, or is some of the others going out of business or something? I, they may be closing another location. Know I don't know. And uh, another thing, when I look at, I don't know how often I like to get into these things, because I don't. But I look and say, where, where, do, where do the people wait to go in? Um, is it near the front door there? Yeah. There's a waiting area right inside the front door. Okay, that's, that's waiting room. Okay, I just didn't see chairs and stuff. That's all. No. Okay, you don't have to show them. If they do this right, you're not waiting very long. Yeah, so. true. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been in one of these, yeah. Many times. Someone down the street. Yeah, that's, that's not mine, Mr. Chairman. Tom? Um, my question kind of dovetails with uh, George's question. Since there are a number of other Quest Diagnostics facilities uh, in town, uh, I think you've already s sort of stated this, but I'd like you to uh, provide the information uh, after the hearing, uh, you know, the next day or so, to the planning office, and that is, will Quest be uh, closing down any of its other offices uh, here in Weathersfield. Right. I, I will contact them and get the answer and I'll get it back to Peter. I appreciate that. You're Secondly, uh, this location, if my memory serves me correctly, is the old uh, Blockbuster Video uh, site. It was the old Blockbuster Video. We subdivided it into three tenant spaces. Uh, and it's now been consolidated back into Chipotle and Quest. Uh, the yogurt, uh, I think everybody who's in our business had, it, had a, two or three frozen yogurt shops and they lasted a year and a half and they're gone. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, it seems like uh, you know, the parking requirements you know, compared to what uh, Blockbuster would have, but now you've got You'll have the two tenants of Quest and uh, Chipotle. Uh, the parking requirements would seem to be about equivalent, roughly equivalent to the traffic that Blockbuster generated years uh, ago. I, I think with Chipotle, you exceed it. Would it exceed it? Yeah. George? Yeah, uh, one more. Uh, a generalized question. Um, you seem to be able to keep good quality tenants in your location, building and yeah, and I know all of you are having trouble, and you're one of the first uh, owners of one of the major buildings along to come in here these days. And I'm concerned and worried about online shopping and shopping centers, especially strip ones, going by the boards. I assume yours would be one of the last because it's, you've kept it up, quality is high. Uh, but are you having problems? I know you didn't rent this up for a couple of years now, have you? It, it's been a couple since, uh, yes, 
it's been a little over two years. Uh, but the size of the space, the 2,400 square feet, you've got to have a going concern to move into that. But uh, we haven't really experienced serious downturn because of online shopping. Online shopping is 10% or less of the total retail market. It gets a lot of press, but there's still uh, a, a, a good market out there for brick and mortar. Okay, good. Uh, and I hope while the sale is holds its own in that, if not above it. I think it will. Right. It's Look, a very convenient location. So. Yes, it is. And so let's hope it continues that way. Thank you. Rich? Make a motion we approve application 2022-19-Z as submitted. Second. Thank Thank you. Order. Uh, should we should we close the hearing first? It's not a hearing. Not a hearing. Oh, it's not a hearing. One of, one of the few that one of the few that aren't. I checked before I said. <laughs> that. <laughs> so I. Um, any comments, concerns with the motion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Best of luck. All right. So uh, we're moving on to other business. Do we have the pre-application review? For the vineyard? Mr. Liam Brody indicated he may not be able to get here until uh, 7.30. Uh, oh, okay. So. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, Mr. Satino? I don't see Mr. Satino either. All right. So uh, a review of the bike and ped improvements in Old Weathersfield? Sure, I can handle that. Uh, at your last meeting, I think um, we discussed tomorrow night's uh, public information session in Old Weathersfield to discuss uh, various bike and pedestrian improvements you uh, requested uh, that we um, discuss this um, at tonight's meeting. So you should have received in your packet a copy of the letter that we sent to the uh, um, many of the residents in Old Weathersfield, uh, and then you should have also received a series of maps and drawings. Um, so uh, depending on how, you're, how you would like to, I can simply go through uh, the 11 uh, listed uh, improvements and if you have questions I'd be happy to uh, answer those or uh, get into the specifics of that so uh, the first I love it. sure the first um, project is um, specifically along Main Street so it's a series of pavement markings uh, and line striping as well as signage uh, for a bike lane on a portion of Main Street um, basically <coughs> from um, where Hamner Park is uh, down um, into the center of, uh, of Main Street. Um, so there is uh, adequate width for that stretch of Main Street. Uh, we feel to put the bike lane on uh, either side of the street. So um, as part of this grant, uh, we would like to do that. Right now, there are um, signs indicating the uh, bike, uh, bike path, but there are no pavement markings. So number one uh, is pretty much limited to those uh, improvements. Uh, number two is replacing the uh, pavement uh, and the associated pavement markings at the intersection of Main Street, Church Street, and Marsh Street. When we redid uh, the intersection and put the four-way stops, uh, the budget did not allow uh, pavement reclamation, and then the associated, we did, we did repaint the crosswalks, but uh, this would be a permanent um, set of repairs or semi-permanent uh, as long as asphalt lasts to the uh, deteriorating pavement uh, at that intersection. So that's number two. Number three uh, is the improvements at Main Street and Hartford to establish a three-way stop controlled intersection. There's also some uh, crosswalks there and some pavement um, narrowing to accommodate uh, those improvements. So right now it's a two-way stop people coming north up Main Street and turning left onto Hartford do not have to stop which creates uh, for folks who aren't uh, used to that intersection a little uh, a little agita let's say so um, so we are uh, floating the idea of making that a three-way stop controlled intersection are there a lot of accidents there uh, they're not um, it's not a hot spot, let's just say. Um, we've had that looked at by the, by the uh, police department. So it's not a, uh, it doesn't you know, light up there, but um, there have been accidents there. Um, it, and it, the, the other thought is it maybe slows down some traffic a little bit as well. So 
Number four are improvements at Maine and state intersection. There's an existing island there. So it says to reduce the island size. I think that's actually going to increase the island size, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, and putting in uh, pedestrian crosswalks. There's also uh, a crosswalk um, at Howard as well, which is kind of in a driveway. It doesn't have handicap ramps, so we're going to improve that uh, as well as part of um, that intersection improvement. So there are minor improvements there. Number five are improvements at Marsh Street and Broad Street. Um, there is a, on the um, cemetery side of Marsh Street, the sidewalk stops. Um, so the plan would be to continue the sidewalk to the uh, driveway of the cemetery. Uh, there's an existing crosswalk there and then put in formal handicap ramps on both sides uh, and then put a put the crosswalk uh, back uh, and align it a little bit a little bit better um, people come flying off of um, the interstate come around that corner we've actually had suggestions that the crosswalk be moved more to the uh, closer to um, Main Street a little bit to get it farther away from that bend in the road so we'll we'll be looking at that uh, as well so that's kind of a minor uh, but it closes the sidewalk gap and puts in another crosswalk or a new crosswalk. Um, number six, improvements at the Heritage Way uh, bike path at Hamner Road. Uh, on Hamner Road, the sidewalk also stops. Uh, it doesn't continue on down Hamner Road, down to the um, down to Cove Park, so we would add sidewalk there. There's also some damaged sidewalk. One second, George. And then we would add um, some additional uh, stone dust, um, a path uh, which would connect up the hill to the Cove warehouse. Right now it's just grass. George, you had a question? All that is good down in there, but I've walked that Cove Park trail many times as part of being on this sidewalk. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of this. But down there, what, what about the street itself? It's yeah, I actually, shape. I, I actually came up. The car almost went in a hole there and literally didn't come out. And that's a, that's a bad thing to say about weather seal. Yeah. Our streets are much better than that. I actually came up from the parking lot of Cove Park tonight and up that, and uh, I had second thoughts about actually going up there because there's the, yeah. the potholes exactly and the deterioration. Yeah. And then I brought my daughter down from New Hampshire. She was here for New Hampshire last weekend, yep. grew up here. And we both said, we walked the trail and we came back and looked at that. Yeah, it it almost should be it almost should be closed because it's that it be. it's that bad. It should close it down. So that's a good observation. Go back out the way they come in. Or better yet, fix it. Pave it. Yeah, fix it. Right. Yep. You know, Peter, can I make another comment right now overall on this? Sure. Um, I have before this commission now for many years. I have kept talking about new Weathersfield. And why is old Weathersfield getting like paving sidewalks and this and that? And I'm behind old Weathersfield strongly, but I keep asking, what about the other half of town? Then I get this presented to me, and I said to Peter a couple of days ago, "Hey, all of these intersections go back to when the uh, when they first uh, settled this town. I mean, that's how bad they are. I know that they've come a long way since." But a lot of them are wide open intersections. And as a non-engineer, I realized when we're doing this, it's tightening up a lot of them makes a heck of a lot of good sense. And I think, in general, the program that the town has presented on this one is a good one. I only asked people one question, which was, how, why is it restricted so close to the old part of old Weathersfield? What about the intersection at the end of the South Green, for example. He said, well, we're restricted how much we can do and where we wanted to limit it to a certain degree. He only got so much money, so I'll um, accept on that. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, number seven, uh, we're putting in a new crosswalk uh, on Main Street um, in front of the Keeney Center, which will take you across uh, Main Street to the uh, driveway of the uh, Webb Dean Stevens uh, museum, so that's a new crosswalk that would be installed there. Um, number eight, changes to the geometry of the intersection of Knott Street and Garden Street um, to relocate sidewalks and crosswalks. There's a little diagram there that shows. Uh, so on um, 
not street. The sidewalk is uh, far removed from the uh, travel lane and the crosswalk is on uh, Garden Street is actually behind the stop sign. So we would um, get rid of the existing sidewalk, move the sidewalk closer to the, uh, to the street, put a new crosswalk in on Garden Street, handicap ramps um, as part of that intersection alignment. Um, so that, that's that particular set of improvements. Number nine are uh, improvements along Garden Street and Standish Park. Um, there is a gravel parking area along the side of the playground, uh, Standish Park. Uh, so we would make that, uh, we would widen the street, make that a formal uh, on-street parking area and install sidewalk uh, to close the sidewalk gap along that side of Garden Street to connect back up to the uh, sidewalk on Knott Street. Yep. We definitely do need parking around Standish Park. Uh, why did you go on, with on-street parking so you didn't have to take land away from the park itself? There isn't a lot of room to put additional parking uh, off-street uh, in the playground without going into the rest of the park. There's some mature trees in there, so we, uh, and people are parking along the street there now and they use it pretty okay. intensively. So it's just a matter of formalizing uh, the parking. There is room to do it. Well, the other side too, uh, over in Hartford outside, you're going to have parking along there too. Right. Which you need. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then um, number I'm 10. I'm wondering if that was the reason you did on street parking. It's one of the only areas other, other than down here in Old Wednesday. It's that you really primarily where the parents park to use the playground. So, oh, okay. yep. Makes best sense. Uh, number 10 or uh, pedestrian crossing improvements at Main and Center Street intersection. So we did actually, if you've been out on Main Street recently, put in a temporary crosswalk there um, just to see um, how, how it works. We've already heard very positive things about it, uh, you know, traffic calming and slowing down traffic. So we would make that a formal uh, set of improvements with handicap ramps and also a crosswalk across uh, Center Street <laughs> as well as Main Street. And then lastly, uh, there is some money in this um, grant to install um, some um, bike, bicycle parking. So um, we would uh, also be looking to do that as well. So those are the 11, 11 improvements throughout Old Weathersfield that this grant would uh, pay for. Out front of uh, park, bicycle parking is the best location, you think? I think it probably is. Uh, we've received some inquiries from different businesses and folks who would like to have some bike parking on their property, so we're going to have to go through that process and determine the best locations so for, it may not for that. Necessarily be exactly there, or you might just add to it. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a conversation. There, the plans show some bike parking right in front of the Keeney Center. I'm not sure that the Historical Society would think that's the best place, so we're going to have those kind of, that's kind of conversations. Why I asked it. I'm not yep. In yep. the Historical Society, I understand that they're thinking. Of it. Right. The only other thing is uh, just uh, we, um, it, this is state funding, so we had to have the improvements reviewed by the State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, they have some concerns with a couple of the improvements, primarily around the Cove Warehouse uh, on um, Marsh and Broad near the uh, Butoff Williams, and also along the cemetery on Marsh Street. So we will have to do some uh, reconnaissance research just to make sure. What's We're the problem with the warehouse? The walkway? Uh, the, they, they have concerns that anytime you disturb soil around historic structures, you may be uncovering some yeah, yeah. Um, artifacts. So we will just be. Like we ran into on Main Street. Yeah. So we will have to retain a, an archaeologist to at least um, do some research for us to determine whether there are any issues. I did, we've, we've spoken with the cemetery. Uh, they. It, that's the more mo modern part of the cemetery, so they're not really concerned that we'll be disturbing much there. Uh, but nevertheless, we have to go through a uh, review process to document all of those things. So just, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Can't do the work at night. Exactly. Um, the only, you know, I support everything that's going on here in terms of you know making it more pedestrian friendly, et cetera. Uh, I, I do think you're putting in uh, a mid 
block crossing. Key Center doesn't have anything stop controlled, right? And no. There are so, existing ones and there's an way. existing one a little bit farther down the street. So um, uh, they specifically wanted. Um, so we think maybe the other one at Center maybe has better. You know, that's at a, that's at an intersection, but it's not stop controlled. So we're taking a look at. Okay. Taking a look at that. Pull the, pull the parking if there's on street parking next to it. Pull that back so you can Correct. see people standing there. Yeah, anytime we put a crosswalk in, there is going to be the consequent loss of some parking. So um, people have to be aware of all of that. Yeah. yeah. Jim, I think we want to congratulate the staff here and uh, not only getting this this grant and so forth, but also this detailed uh, uh, design work that they've put in on the various sites. And uh, looks good to me and all of us up there. Thanks, Peter. And whatever staff group. Town, en help. town engineer. Very good. Thank you. It's nice to have the technology with Map Geo online too and be able to uh, identify all the detail that comes in here, especially with the aerial and the views that we have. The color imagery also helps. And that when the time comes, how will you put out a contract? So we will, th these are just conceptual. Mm -hmm. So, um, the purpose of the meeting tomorrow night is to vet these improvements, make sure there's not, uh, um, you know, concerns or objections to some of the improvements. Uh, over the winter, the plans will be uh, further uh, refined and a set of bid documents will be put together and we will competitively uh, bid the improvements. They have to go through a state uh, approved um, competitive bidding process. So that would be something we would hope to maybe uh, do in the springtime if the uh, winter time allows us to catch up with that. So, so maybe the work could be done next year. Anything else for Peter? All right. Should we, shall we go back to? Uh, do we have a Mr. Mr. Liam, Mr. Liam Bruni yet? Mr. Liam Bruni. Okay. So uh, go back to item four point one, a pre-application uh, for a boutique farm vineyard at two hundred Broad Street. So, so welcome. If you would introduce yourself and just tell us what you'd like us to consider. My name is uh, Pete Lombroni. I live at 200 Broad Street in Old Weathersfield. Um, could, you, could you do me a favor and just turn the mic? The last person. Yeah, there you go. Is that better? <laughs> it's much okay. better. Thank you. Pete Lombroni, 200 Broad Street, Old Weathersfield. Uh, nice to see some of my old colleagues. George? Yes, good to see you again. Where have you been hiding? <laughs> oh, I've been everywhere. Joe is here. Joe, you're the only one that doesn't have gray hair. How come? <laughs> and Anthony. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> oh, Rich is here too. Yeah, My goodness. What did I ever do and, to you? And oh, his is gray. Goodness. Yeah, silver. So it's nice to see everybody. I was uh, planning and zoning many years ago. Actually, I was chairman for a couple of years. So this was a interesting uh, uh, little group. And. Uh, what I'm here tonight to ask is your indulgence in hearing out an idea I have in putting a small boutique vineyard in my property in Old Weathersfield. Uh, 200 Broad Street is adjacent to the farm. Uh, it used to be the uh, Morris Farm. It's no longer Frank's farm, as you know. He passed a few years ago. But it's still being operated as a farm. And adjacent to that farm is my property. I have approximately uh, two and a half acres, but I'm leasing land from my neighbor, so I am an official farm, because you need five acres to be a, uh, an official farm. Uh, my idea is to grow grapes, grow varieties that <clears throat> uh, hopefully are good in Connecticut. I've been doing some research with Cornell University. I spent some time in upstate New York on some nuclear good power plants, plants, and there's a lot of vineyards there. So I got interested in the whole horticulture stuff in, uh, in uh, the New England area, uh, visited uh, the Cornell area. So I've been experimenting uh, over the years with uh, various kinds of varietal grapes. Uh, they're French-American hybrids and German-American hybrids. And I've decided on a couple different varieties. And I probably went a little overboard, but I planted an acre of grapes just to get started. Now you can always you know, take grapes out, but it takes three to four years to grow grapes. So I put uh, about 400 plants in, uh, in an acre of grapes in my land, uh, and I have a farm vineyard. 
It's called Maylot. Maylot was the original name of my farmstead that goes back basically to King James. If you, if you go way, way back and look at all the records, my house was built in 1769. So we have some of those records. So we went with the traditional name, it was called Maylot. And what we'd like to do is basically create um, a small uh, boutique vineyard that will only have wine tasting and people can uh, you know, purchase wine uh, during certain hours, only two days. We want to do this for Saturdays and Sundays, uh, probably noon to about five. And it's going to be seasonal. I, I didn't put that in the papers. I forgot to do that. But we're talking maybe starting opening up probably 1st of May when, when temperatures are a little better. It's a, a little bit better in uh, temperature environment. And then closing down probably November 1st. So it'll be a seasonal farm business. It'll be a, a farm vineyard. I've been doing some research on farm vineyards in Connecticut. There's 40 of them. They're all different sizes. I, I didn't realize that there were so many. When I first got this idea and started experimenting, there were only 17. Today, there's 40. So it's actually uh, uh, something that's growing in Connecticut. A lot of different people are trying it. Uh, I would have to say that what I'm asking could almost be called a micro vineyard, because we're, we're only talking, uh, if you look at the pictures that I've given you, uh, I'm going to be using what used to be an old root cellar that I've re remodeled. Uh, that's the picture with the two double doors there with, with the white double doors. That, that used to be the root cellar in the house. So I've made that into my production room. And then next to it is a, a small uh, building, outbuilding that used to be, uh, I guess, the old barn. And that would be where the actual uh, wine production would be. Based on the number of plants that I have and the, uh, the production facility that I have, I'm talking about maybe a thousand <laughs> bottles of, um, of wine produced a year, which really makes it like a micro operation. Uh, on average, I think in Connecticut, they're, they're doing like 10 to 20,000 bottles, the, uh, the vineyards that you see around here in different places. Uh, frankly, this is just a hobby business I want to do. Uh, I've been... Uh, traveling for many, many years. Uh, I'm a nuclear engineer. I've been uh, spending a lot of time on nuclear plants around the world, and I'm ready to retire. And I got this idea that I'd like to do this. Uh, my grandfather had a vineyard in Italy. Uh, he taught me a little bit of the ropes of growing grapes and making wine, and I've experimented with different wines, and people have liked my wine. So I'd like to try to see if I could give it to more people if they're interested. So that would be the idea of this vineyard. The only thing that uh, concerns me, and I'll bring it up, because I'm sure uh, some of you may have noted that, is the question of parking. So if you look at my, in my property, you know, how, how do you do the parking? How do you get the access? I have a long driveway. My house is back about 400 feet from the road. Uh, I do have uh, a spot uh, just in front of the house that's, that's fairly well uh, flat, and I can put easily six parking spaces there. So I, I would accommodate right on the property itself, six parking spaces. And if you look at the way my property is situated from, from where Broad Street is to my property line, there's there's a large buffer. Snow of, shelf. Snow shelf, it's, it's almost 150 feet of snow shelf. It's just the way it's configured there at Broad Street. Uh, and that shows and us- And you own that. No, 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 I don't. No, no, do you no, own out beyond the sidewalk or no, not? No, 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 I don't know. No, it's town. Doesn't own the snow shelf. It's no, town right away. No, no, that's well, that's town right away. But that's why I was asking the question. I was. Is, is it actually? Town? Town? I get I, confused by it. That's his property okay. line right there. Is it no, but the sidewalk is the town boundary, just like it is everywhere else, sort of. Yeah. No. The inside of it. It's the line that, if you look on his map, you can see where the line is. Yeah. Well. And it's up above the. Sidewalk. It's up at the street line. So, so if I could use that, if I could use the snow shelf area uh, for additional parking, it adds um, another six spaces or so. Otherwise, I'd be limited to uh, six uh, spots on my property proper. You're going to pave it, too? I could. Um, it's up to you guys if you like it paved or not. I mean, I, if right now it's like a double driveway. It's just, I would have to just extend it uh, to be able to put more cars there. 
Are you going to have wine from the outside or just your own? No, just what I make. And, and, and the, other, the other thing that's important here, I'm not into uh, uh, you know, making this a, a consumption uh, vineyard. I'm not sure what the right terminology is. I forget the terminology, but there's two kinds of vineyards. One is a wine tasting, which you get just a smidgen. Uh, and if you like it, you buy it. If you don't, you leave. Others, you know, you can buy a bottle and consume a bottle on the property. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to have any buying and consuming on the property. If people want to taste my wine and like it and want to buy it, they could do so, but no consumption on the property. So it's so, a commercial. So, George. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Right. So um, I have in the back of my mind the most smaller places buy grapes. Um, your proposal would be to simply use the grapes you grow um, the rules in Connecticut are that if you're a farm vineyard, uh, you could um, actually buy a certain percent of your, of your grapes. So you, you would have to grow and buy if you want that much production. W with 400 plants, I, I probably have too much already for, for 1,000 <laughs> bottles, so I'm probably even right? going to be cutting back. I, I hope not to have to buy grapes. Okay. Um, can anybody help me? That's probably Broad Street Green, right? The property in front, so yeah, is it, it may well right be. Away. So yeah, but town right away it has a different meaning to me, anyways, than the green. So parking on the green, even if it's on your side of the road, um, could be a neighbor issue. I've talked to the neighbors because I felt that that would be a concern. At least my adjacent neighbors haven't uh, really uh, said there'd be any issues. It's kind of like what uh, Anderson does. You know that, that that shelf that Anderson has there? That's kind of the green too, and he allows parking to buy vegetables. People drive up and they park on the shelf. Instead of being in front uh, horizontally, mine would be vertically because it, it goes in deep along, along the driveway. Other questions? I think a question Sorry. to Peter. This is a um, to this Peter. Uh, it's a um, pre-application review. It's more of a concept than looking for our comments and our thoughts prior to. The next step, which would be? That's a good question. So uh, it doesn't fit into any particular um, category that we have in our regulations. So we're looking for some guidance. Um, you know, many communities have gone through a process of revising their regulations to encourage, you know, this kind of agricultural um, activity. Um, uh, I haven't researched it yet as to how other communities have handled this. Um, your present regulations allow farms to um, have incidental sales of agricultural and horticultural commodities. So there's some language in there that do does allow farms. We do allow farm stands. Um, um, so there's some language in there um, that probably could allow this on a certain basis to um, uh, but those approvals, I think, are pretty much staff level. They don't require the Planning and Zoning Commission maybe to get involved um, uh, versus maybe a new regulation that would, you know, require them to get your approval. So I guess we're just testing the waters as to whether this is something you want to work to create some specific regulations or are you okay with the concept of him working with staff? Uh, those are the two kind of extremes that um, we just don't have anything that particularly says that micro vineyards or, and I don't know how the liquor permitting works. Um, maybe, Peter, you've researched that and you yeah, could talk, because yeah. we don't have a provision in our liquor regulations. Uh, yeah. Obviously, liquor regulations are primarily dealing with commercial yeah. properties, and this is a residential property, so. Yeah. I, I can't speak for the town uh, on <clears throat> how you want to handle it, but I mean, this is, this is an arduous process. I, I'm going to you first to make sure that it's going to be okay and there's a way forward. But beyond this, it's tobacco firearms. Uh, it's a federal license, so I have to apply to a federal license. And uh, they then would ask me to go and apply for a state license. So as a farm vineyard, if you get those two licenses, you can sell wine that you produce on your farm. You may buy some grapes. To a certain percent, you can, but that's it. And you can sell with those two licenses without, uh, uh, I think, without a liquor license. 
as long as it's a farm vineyard. Because I'm not wholesaling, I'm not selling outside. It's really just on the property as produce of the farm. Uh, those two processes is gonna take a year. So before I start down that path, I wanna make sure that at least you're amenable to, to something like this. I asked because of, I didn't know the definition of a boutique farm vineyard type of thing. And I think that's a nice word for this to the point, Peter, where you might get to the point where this does take off and you might have to have invitation only to have your tasting. Now, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a nice thing That'd to see? <laughs> one car at a time maybe, or you know, to limit it. Uh, you, you're not talking about any nighttime lighting. You're not talking about any music. You're not talking about picnic tables or any extensive, it's a boutique venue is what, what I think makes it special and pretty unique for the town. This, this is my this, wife, Janet. Uh, we're just at the choir, so she's a little late too. So we're going to be doing this together. I mean, she's just retired, and I'll probably be retiring within a year. So this will be our plan. So all the work goes to her. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new. Uh, it was just approved by the the state. Just I think this is the first year, or second year that they you can sell wine that you produce on here. This is. It's. Uh, I'm not sure it's the second. Maybe a little more than two years, but it is recent. It's, it's only been a few years, you're, you're correct. Rich? Yeah, I, I, I guess my thoughts are, you know, I like the idea. And, you know, having seen situations like this in other towns where, you know, your biggest, your biggest threat is success. Um, you know, where the demand outgrows what you have permission to do, it outgrows your site and so forth. Um, you know, frankly, I think the way that I would feel most comfortable proceeding, and I like the idea, is if we had farm winery regulations as a special permit use in certain zones, you know, so that we could, you know, look at each application on its own merits and figure out what fits here. You know, if somebody wants to do it on Highland Street or something, what fits there? You know, and that sort of thing, um, because the tension comes when your wine is the you know the new white claw, and everybody in the world wants it, and they're parking all over the green, and you know people want to have the Pete Lombruni wedding, you know, vineyard wedding destination, and you know that that may not be what you have in mind, but if we basically say, yeah, go ahead, you can do wine as sort of an accessory to an agricultural use without any kind of limiting regulations. How do we tell the people, you know, halfway down the Broad Street Green who have, you know, bigger plans as to what they want to do that they can't do it? And, um, you know, I've, I've done the regulations, I've done them for farm distilleries, farm breweries, it's not rocket science, you know, so it, it's not really going to be onerous to do and I think it probably protects you as well as the town to have a clear framework that you're operating in so that if you know if you become successful you know what the limits are on what you can do um, and you're not necessarily you know being kind of held hostage to what the interpretation of the next zoning <laughs> enforcement officer might be as far as what you can do i think i think you know relatively straightforward farm winery regulations special permit use you know will will deal with what you want to do get you where you want to be and and it'll give you some certainty that you know that you can keep doing it well Rich, I, I, I think that's, that's wise. I don't disagree with that. And it's going to take me at least a year to get the other permits. Uh, as long as I have some assurance that you guys are amenable to this and we can proceed and spend the energy trying to get you know, tobacco and firearm in the state, I mean, that, that's going to be uh, some energy too, you know? Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I don't remember whether it was while well, you were on the commission or not, but I mean, the, the whole bed and breakfast thing and, you know, kind of outgrowing the original expectations and all the drama that came along with that you know I, I think if we have finite regulations that that you can live with and that we can live with at least then everybody will know what the ground rules are 
uh, and it, it'll make for a better relationship, I think. George. Yeah, uh, my concern, I'm glad to hear what the way uh, Rich started out, that uh, he likes the idea, I do too. Um, my problem would be, you now across the street there was a proposed wedding venue, and that's a major business at one point, potentially, but, but they were trying to treat that in a lighter manner, um, a limited manner. Uh, now I don't know how we would control it uh, as far as um, more than the boutique, but I think it can be done as Rich kind of decided, and I think the commission may feel this way. I'd like to see it be successful, but uh, I, the commercial aspect of it bothers me a little that it wouldn't get listed as a commercial location and where it, there's no commercial down there except for the farm stand. I think every agricultural use is commercial in one way or another. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, my, my own thoughts are it's obviously where uh, where Rich went because um, I was concerned, obviously, like we all know what took place across the street. Uh, but it, uh, you're, you're right, you just said it. It kind of was the whole wedding venue stuff and growing beyond what our expectations were when we first set it up, right? So it's success. So that's your point. So... Um, is there a how long would that take can you get that done in a year I mean as rich indicated there are uh, regulations out there that we could probably uh, grab real quick and model something after and uh, what was that graph them, yes. them nice um, so um, yeah, I think in literally a couple of months it wouldn't no it wouldn't take a year um, do the research come up with a draft and um, Maybe have you guys look at it before it gets finalized just to make sure we're in the ballpark and then schedule it for a public hearing. So we have to provide notice for about a month or so before you can have the hearing. So yeah, a couple couple months is uh, um, probably the timeline we're talking about. So are there any concerns on the commission regarding the use in general? Any reservations? I don't... I, don't, I, I obviously don't. I've said I'd it like already. I'd like to hear if there are any members of the public that want to speak to this one. Okay. Um, okay, it's not a public hearing. Sure. Come on up to the microphone if you wouldn't mind if you're going to. Hi, my name is David Cormick, 143 Garden Street. So his neighbor, I believe, has an egg sign. So I'd rather drive into his driveway and buy wine and go down the neighbor's driveway and buy eggs. So I'm not sure there's a big difference. So I hope you're successful. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. If, if I could Thank just you. address one, one question, because Janet brought it up again, the parking. Uh, the, the, the part in front of the sidewalk, that long snow shelf, as you said, George, w would that be OK if we wanted to use that as parking, sort of similar to what Anderson's doing, you know, for his farm stand. I, I mean, I just, otherwise I'm limited to six spaces on the property itself. Because we don't want people coming to the back of the house. We, we want to just keep it very low volume, you know? Wait a minute, Peter. So, but Anderson is in front of the sidewalk. It's parking, right? Is it? I don't know. It's behind the sidewalk. Oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's all over. It's on the street it's, it's, side. But his is, his is long ways. Why yeah. is this way? Yeah, yeah. So, more importantly, is it within the town's right of way that people park? Yeah, Probably, yes. yeah, yeah. Right. So I can't speak to how that got created, so I. Yeah. We're in a more contemporary time where lawyers and liability and all that stuff. Uh, nothing against lawyers, but. Um, <laughs> so I mean that would be a whole another conversation. It may be beyond the Planning and Zoning Commission's authority as well. So um, that that would have to be subject to other people's input, even if right. you guys think it's but okay. Don't hesitate to discuss that with. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and the neighbors would want to have some input, I assume, as well. So it's not just a straightforward. <clears throat> All right. Is that grass or gravel down there now? Uh, about half and half. We have two driveways which are gravel. Yeah, it's it's kind of messy. We have to clean it up. I think you might want to pave that though. 
But I don't know, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe yeah. gravelly? Gravelly would be yeah. better. Better for the trees nearby. And they can, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's allowed, Peter? Uh, that's got to be a dust, you know, I can't remember the terminology we used, but dust. Stone dust. Stone or dust or yeah. some sort of processed. Yeah, yeah. If it's not paved, it would have to be something that's not moving around and creating other problems. I don't so think there's any drainage issues down in there, do we? No. After this use. So, so are you comfortable with the feedback? It sounds like yeah. generally people are okay with it. But I we send this feedback. Uh, I'll work with Peter, Peter on the regulations, and we'll proceed uh, with the back on firearms in the state and see where it goes. It's going to take at least a year before we come back for uh, final approvals. Yeah. The idea is good. I, I think it's it's a good location, and uh, I like where you're rich. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, you know, as you've described it, the scale is appropriate. It's not going to overwhelm the neighborhood with, right. you know, commercial activity, and it's, I think it's relatively consistent with everything else that's going on down there. Right. And and you know. For the commission members, it does sit way back compared to right. where the stand is across the street. Right. For yep. example, right? It's about 400 feet back, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for uh, indulging and hearing <coughs> us out, and uh, hopefully we'll be back in a year. We'll be successful with the other two approvals. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Is Mr. Satino here? Yes, he is. Oh, okay. So then we're going to recall item 4.2, a pre-application review. Seeking uh, subdivision at 248 Knott Street. Welcome back. Frank Satano, 387 Wells Road, and I'm here for a uh, pre-conference, I'll call it, regarding the subdivision on Knott Street and Wilkett Hill. I'd like to pass this out. What I'm passing out is an updated drawing for the single-family proposal showing the additional parking that I thought would uh, be beneficial. Okay. And also there's some comparison. How is that different than what we have here? Uh, the one that you have, I believe the parking was limited, so we, we increased the size of the driveways. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. You get the three. Yeah, okay, you, you have the three family, that stays, yeah. you have the, the three, two families stay the same. The single family is where we add the additional parking. There we go. And then there's one sheet which shows a, uh, there's one sheet which shows a comparison between the proposal one, the two family, and the proposal two, the single family. Okay, so just kind of recapping where we were, you showed us something, I think it was last meeting, so it must have been uh, four weeks ago, with uh, four subdivided in four ways, and we talked about three would be more desirable from our point of view. We sort of threw that out the window. Okay, so where uh, do we stand today? Sure, go ahead. Oh. So I try to take uh, what information was given to me at our last meeting. Uh, with that, I tossed out the first proposal. Uh, so I came back with three, two families. No variances, no uh, encroachments upon the existing zoning regulations. And then I came back with a second proposal for four single families. One of the other issues that developed in our previous conversation was the driveway. Uh, was the, and the driveway. So engineering uh, sent me an email, and basically, along with that email, they attached the drawing for the three, two families, and said everything was fine other than we have to address drainage and need to repair any damage you do to the roadway or the sidewalks. I responded, thank you. Can I assume that that is the same for the proposal of the single families. And Derek responded, yes. So he has no issues with the driveway. Engineering, from their perspective, we're good in the driveways, we've resolved that. So now we have to determine what is going to satisfy this committee uh, in terms of what we, what we proceed with, if we do proceed. 
So with that comparison uh, on the single family, if we were to do four, it's going to give us four units, 7,200 square feet, 16 bedrooms, eight full baths, four halves, 12 parking spaces. Two family, three units, 7,200 square feet, 18 bedrooms, six baths, 18 parking spaces. Because you asked me to give you six parking spaces uh, per unit versus the required four, and I have no problem providing six. <clears throat> also, I provided three for the single family, although zoning only requires two. With that said, in the event someone has a party, you can easily fit one, two, three, you can fit five cars in the driveway in the event of some sort of family function. So I don't know what else I can add. I, it's pretty straightforward, I think. So I'll okay. address any questions that you may have. So the, the, the four last time also had exceptions. They weren't uh, that completely one, combined, One we right? needed an exception. One lot was only 50 feet. Right. Uh, so now with what, with what I propose now, yeah. the single family are all six, three or 60 feet. One is 103. Yeah. So they all meet the zoning requirements. On the two family, the zoning requirements are 75 feet, and we exceed that on all three lots. Okay. You know, I, I know I was vocal last time about the driveways coming into the intersection. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I look at your four, which I gather is where you'd really prefer to be. Right. Um, and and I, I don't have an argument at this point. You're compliant and your driveways are set back. You know, I, I take that as progress. You know, that's my we're initial trying, reaction. We're trying. Mm -hmm. Work on progress. Other thoughts? I, yes. I like the turnarounds that you have for each lot also. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Yes. Uh, we we'll call it a hammerhead, yes. Hammerheads, the turnarounds. And, so what I'd like to do is it, if I could possibly gather by the end of this evening whether Proposal 1 or Proposal 2 would be acceptable, because money is not an issue when we discuss this. I realize that I know how zoning works. But if you're privy to both, then I'd like to do some additional market research and see which, at that point, is more beneficial to myself and my family mm. from a financial aspect. But that has nothing to do with zoning. So if, if both work, I'd like to con consider that option. If you say no, we prefer one over the other, I'll go in that direction, because I'm not looking to get into a battle. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I guess my thoughts are single families probably more consistent with the whole neighborhood Generally, if you comply with the subdivision regulations for each of the, you know, possible scenarios, mm -hmm. then we don't really have a whole lot we can talk about. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess my question, I guess my question would be, for your two-family dwellings, how would the parking work for the driveways? Because I, I agree with you, um, I think it was Rich, that, you know, I like, or Tony, about the hammerhead driveway. Yes. I could see how that's well, a nice feature. For the single family. For the single family. On the family. two family, yeah. all the parking would be in the rear of the building. I see. So and you there's could actually, plenty of land. So you could actually turn around. You'd be turning around in the back. You're not mm -hmm. going to back out on the two families. So there'd be no cars in the front. But two families have a different different impact. I know my son my, my son and my daughter are here this evening because they want one of the two families. That's irrelevant to what we're discussing tonight. <laughs> for no pressure. <laughs> Pay for it. <laughs> George? Yeah, just a question. Uh, to, uh, have you talked to the town engineer, or is the town going to be redoing this intersection at all in the next few years? That they, I've, Because I've heard a complaint or two how bad it is, and I've been down there, when, and I don't go through it every day. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's it's an unusual intersection with the other leg. Um, it was identified in the um, uh, safe routes to school report they did for the elementary school there. They identified this intersection as, you know, uh, needing at least a certain level of improvement, maybe moving the crosswalks around and doing some other things. So, but I don't know that it's on any list of, you know, I mean, it would be a significant unless we got a uh, state grant like we're getting for Highland or Wilkett, Wilkett Hill. So uh, um, I'm not sure it's an imminent imminent thing, but certainly uh, that whole intersection could use uh, some improvements. Put in a roundabout. Here you go. Probably got enough uh, right away. You do. 
Are the sidewalks in good shape now? Uh, as of right now, yes. You know, the yeah, as, as of right now, they are. I can tell you from personal experience. You tell the trucks where to go, and sometimes they don't listen. We may end up with new sidewalks. But that, we have no control over that. Yeah. Joe? So either way, when it's done, the sidewalks have to meet the town specs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll be No, out. I meant if they're broken now. No, as of right now, they're pretty good. Fixed, they're old, uh, but as of right now, they're pretty good. They're, so, they're solid. Joe? Would either the one family or two family plans have garages or any uh, the in? The one family has a single car attached to garage. And so if you look at the driveway, it leads right up to the garage. Yeah. There's a little outline there. So it'll be one, one car attached to garage on the single family. The two family, no, all open parking in the rear. Okay. They, they, they all seem to have a side parking too, like uh, one in the one garage one and one to the, the side. side. Yes. Right, right. So in the, in the in the one families, you could fit one in and two out, basically, Correct. if you had to. Comfortably one in and two out. In the event of a family function, it's right. a little bit five comfortably, but then when someone leaves, Joe, move your car, that happens. Um, again, I, I agree. If it meets zoning, it meets zoning. But I guess just an observation is one positive, I think, of the one family is that you get some of your parking inside versus... Mm -hmm a big surface parking behind <coughs> each of the two family units if we, that if are we did the one family for aesthetic purposes they would be paver driveways i don't do blacktop all my jobs are pavers what type pavers? it would be a paver driveway no blacktop so aesthetically it's a little more pleasing than seeing all that black in the front is that, is that similar to what you did on church street or uh, the one i'm building on church but yeah the, that's a that's got that, pavers, that's a paver driveway think, right yes. yeah yes yeah. so something comparable to that yeah, I mean, if you're looking for preferences, I go single family too. Right. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think that's what matters. <laughs> the distance factor from the corner with the single family looks like we're pushing more, it back quite a bit. It's quite back quite a bit, and the right. driveways themselves are farther away from the corner on the single yes, family than the two families. Correct. So we're improving on the driveway. I don't have documentation. I I actually spent two mornings there, watching the traffic. It is congested. Congested on Knott Street, no doubt about it. Not on Wilkett. Wilkett is, uh, you know, you're, you're not pulling into a, a lot of blind spots on Knott Street. I drive it every day, and I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, Knott Street is a tough one. So you you think the single family one then is best? Just because the driveways uh, curb cuts are farther away from the, the primary intersection, so right. I think Just logistically I, I it would make it. sense anyway. Okay. Safety reasons. Mm -hmm. I think we're green. Would the, would the okay. uh, two family houses be built as rental properties? Uh, my daughter and my son in law would live in one. Uh, I may very well keep one, but in all likelihood, they're usually purchased, owner, tenant, occupied. Initially, anyways. Initially, okay. yeah, initially, yes. What happens there? if you sell two of them singles and then all of a sudden somebody wants a two family? Can't do it. You can, you I can't. When should, when should divide? That's it. Uh, yeah, no, you know, it's, it's, uh, we, we don't wish you wash. We're, we're going to pick our route and then go with it. Yeah. Time is money. It doesn't make sense to drag this on. Get it done. Move on to the next one. Okay. Any other questions for the uh, future applicant? <laughs> if not, I think you got enough to go on, right? Okay. So with like, that again. said, just what? So can I assume that I can come back with either plan as long as I meet? So, so um, what you heard... I understand, I understand the preferences. I got the preferences. Yeah, right. I mean, it's only yeah. a preference, right? right. Um, what you heard is that there's not a whole lot that we'll have to say about it okay. as, if it's compliant. You know, this right. goes back to the last meeting we had. Right. Which was was, you were asking for something that was non-compliant. And there we had some... I tried. I tried. No, you did. Right? I appreciate that. Thank and you, you moved the driveways back. All good. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. I don't want to leave See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, all righty. <clears throat> I think we're through everything. Minutes. We got the minutes electronically. We have them here as well, right? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you both. All those in favor say aye. 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 There's plenty of us here. All right. Um, so, folks, you're clearly here for something. And it is uh, public comment time.
Is there some topic you want to address us about? Good evening. My name is Kieran Williams. I live on 149 Garden Street. And uh, I'm going to digress for a moment. See that seal behind you? What is that? The seal? Yeah. It's the seal of the town of Wethersfield. And what's on that seal? Oh. Cove Warehouse. The Cove? Oh, Something we haven't yeah. taken care of in town for 70 years I've lived here. And that Cove looks worse today than it did back then. <clears throat> that setup that you guys have put in, this is not my main topic, by the way. That Cove, with the grant work, that you did has cut the cove in half. You, I believe, were the gentleman who said that looked like the mini Grand Canyon going up. That's a disgrace. It is. It's a disgrace of this town. Who's responsible? Who's doing something? Who cares? If it's any of you, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I apologize. But that cove is set up so poorly with that new change and driving over the ramp and the loose stones there. And if you do shut down that you can't use that, then you've cut off half the cove, which means you'll have double traffic over that ramp. That ramp is put in too close to the dock. A lot of these people are not expert uh, boat people, if that's the right word. Windy day, they get distracted something goes into that dock. So I don't know the geography of why that location was picked, but the work that was done there is silly, stupid. And I hope something's gonna be done to address it. That's our town seal. It goes on on all your stationery. And you let that place drag down for 70 plus years. That's all that I can speak of since I've been here. So shame that to whomever is allowing this to just lay out the way that it is. I would hope if it's any of you ladies or gentlemen are involved in it in any way, shape or form, you could speak to the number of people that you run into in our town who keep, what the hell happened to the cove? What's going on down the cove? So, item one. Item two, I believe it was you also, sir, that were talking about old Wethersfield in parking. Now, I just took that monkey survey. Did you guys take it and fill it out? No? Please do, and be honest about it. Because we in old Wethersfield that I've lived in for, we've lived in for almost 40 years, it's a neighborhood. This town has forgotten the fact that we're a neighborhood. You put a business in and they can't park cars, be it a restaurant or whatever, where do they park? On the street. Is that safe? Is it attractive? You have the Christmas tree lighting, you have the uh, the shops people, what, uh, several weeks ago had the weekend event, and I'm all for supporting our people in town, our business in town. But Old Wethersfield is a neighborhood. It's not a money grab, sneak anything you can, get another business in there. You put that new, what used to be the Pyquag and then Blades, where are those people gonna park? Where's the staff gonna park? That'll fill up their parking lot. Where are the other cars going to park? You know where they park? In front of homeowners' houses. How would you like to have your home have traffic and park cars in it literally, let's say, 11 o'clock on, lunch hour on? And let's say they come out drunk at 10 o'clock at night or boisterous and fun and just good people having fun. And rah, rah, rah. You want to live with that all day long? I wouldn't think you would. A new business has to provide its own parking or don't let them in. 
You've, or you guys got to start thinking about where are we going to have parking? The churches? Behind the Keeney? Behind Wethersfield Museum? Where? Because it's not attractive. Scarecrows on Main. You know how busy it is during, uh, for a month, especially obviously on the weekends. Dangerous. These new regulations or changes you're going to be able to make via this grant is wonderful. It's great. Close off Old Main Street for the Christmas lighting. No parking, no cars. Figure that out. Make a change. Old Wethersfield, you're losing the charm. We're losing the charm. You know, there is anything we talk about in terms of business, Old Wethersfield. Old Wethersfield. How many other parts of town are there besides the Berlin Turnpike? You're abusing the facilities. There are too many cars, too many people, too little consideration for the homeowners and their lifestyle. The way you keep cramming and jamming everything into Old Wethersfield, our jewel. It won't be a jewel. Like the Cove isn't a jewel. What do people know about Wethersfield? Old Wethersfield, the Cove. The Cove, the disgrace. Old Wethersfield, if you lived in it, you wouldn't be as happy as perhaps others who come to visit. And that's great. Let them park on the uh, park side of the green, Broad Street Green, not on the side where people's homes are. Cornfest, where do you think people park? Now, these are one-day events, usually, and, and I think we all understand that. But you got to start thinking about the neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. You all live in neighborhoods. You all live in town. Would you want all of that wrapped around you all the time? So please think about that. Now... The reason we're here tonight is, and Peter, I have to start with a question, and he's, there he is. Way back when, you directed me to send any correspondence to Charles Morrison. He was the contact. Yet, I don't see his name here. What are you looking at? I'm sorry. I'm looking at your, your minutes and the seal and the membership of the committee. Okay. Yeah, his name is not on there. He's his not on this commission. He's a is staff. he part of this? He's a staff person. Which means? He's the zoning officer. He works for the town. He's not a member of this commission, and he's not a staff support to this commission. Then why the heck am I asked to write to him? Because he's the zoning officer, as I said. He's responsible for enforcing the zoning regulations. Okay. Convoluted. No, it's quite clear and quite straightforward. Clear. Quite clear? Yes. He knows oh, everything I, about so what's we, going on, does excuse he? Excuse me, sir. No, he doesn't. Can we, I can tell you why he doesn't. Can we move on? What is the issue that you're here to talk to us tonight about? There are other people who will probably want okay. to talk as well. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm here to talk about you guys doing your job fairly, properly, and legally. We have, going back to April, April, eight months ago, we're here to talk about WAG time kennel and whomever allowed that to go in originally under the auspices of a veterinary hospital is the same as a kennel is ludicrous asinine somebody's hiding under that I have the definitions of what a veterinary is and what a kennel is they're not anywhere near the same operation when Halsey was there for those years Never heard a word. And here's the fun part, guys, gals. Hallisey attempted to put runs in the back years ago, and they were single runs, not a playground where dogs go wackadoo nuts. He was turned down. You put a nuisance into a neighborhood, not street to Main Street, all the side streets and Garden Street. Have you heard about the problems that are going on? Because I've written Charles. 
I've written Peter. I, when I say I, we, <coughs> we've been at town council meetings. We've talked with Gary Evans. We call. We've contacted the chief. We've spoken with him via email. Nothing in eight months is done. Now what we've just learned, Charles has told me one thing last Friday, different than what the mayor and the town manager had said to us. That's one of the problems, communication. We write a lot of letters, we make a lot of phone calls, and guess what? We don't hear anything. Go to the town council meeting, you have five minutes. You guys are more gracious than that. But you can't ask questions. So if you can't ask the town questions, and they don't respond to your written request, what's left? Where, where is the communication? Hell, we're not New York City. We're Weathersfield, Connecticut. 25 and change people, thousands. I don't get it. We don't get it. I, <coughs> we submitted a nuisance complaint. And by your town regulations, this outfit is not complicit with the laws of the town's regulations. We've written it, we've spoken it, I haven't gotten a single thing back. We did make our first normal, what would it be, legal complaint last Monday or Tuesday. And the individual said, well, I'm gonna write it up. I've sat here for three hours. I hear what you're talking about. There's no question, it is a nuisance. And it's a $75 fine per dog. She says, I will put it in. I don't know what will happen. Have we heard? What would you guess if we took a vote? No. Where do we go? We have heard they have to resubmit the application because they were not honest, open about the information they submitted. They didn't have approval for a fenced in. They didn't have approval for a plot change. Yet they were approved. And I won't bore you now by asking the myriad of questions that we have written in to Charles and the mayor and the town manager. What procedure was asked? What questions were posed? How did you qualify that this individual, when the guy before him couldn't get it as a veterinarian, couldn't get it? So we are confused, frustrated, pissed off. We get nothing. So now we're coming to you to, and I apologize, I didn't get letters to all you people, because, and I'll be happy to make everything we've written for five, six months, which I'm sure would be boring. However, I was directed to Charles Morrison, who, by his own words, quote, well, I don't go to all the meetings. The hell is this guy, a shadow? If he's the enforcement officer, why isn't he present and involved? With I, what? With what? With this issue. He's the zoning officer. He probably is. We don't know. This commission. Well, has, we don't. So, so who bear, does? So bear with me. This commission has heard nothing other than hearsay, right? We don't know anything about it. We didn't see an application prior to, which was a question that you asked before. Well, if you guys approved, so I say well, you guys, if this committee approved it, your predecessors or whatever. Well, maybe years ago, but. A year but, ago. No, I no, think. No. I think no. We probably approved it when PJ built the building, and we might have seen it when... What year? In the 90s. Are you talking about Halsey? You're talking yeah. about uh, Zulu or Zunu, the realty so, company who owns it now. No, I, I think the only time we saw it was when it was originally built, and then probably one other time, but this has got to be more than 10 years ago. Well, what you're saying is confusing me, sir, because what we've told is that they went before the application, made the application, went through all the steps and procedures, how could they not go through planning and zoning that we've been told that they did and followed all the steps? So, and that the planning and zoning, and I'm talking roughly January of this 
or 18 or I forget what it is. So our, so our problem started what roughly March, April. Okay. So before that, and I went to see who this Zunu Realty is, who when they bought it, and that was February. Okay. Then this outfit is in there now. So you're saying you know nothing about it. That is terribly puzzling by virtue of the fact that we have been assured that this went to and through with the approval of planning and zoning. And if I'm making this up or if I'm way wrong, I, I'm shocked by your comment. So well, well, I think the answer is that there are some applications that people submit that are dealt with at a staff level that don't come to us, you know, and all I can do is assume that this is one of the ones and that, that was word. processed at the staff level because it didn't come to this commission. And quite often if it's, you know, a like-for-like -like exchange of uses or the interpretation by the zoning officer is that, you know, it fits within a certain use, they issue the permit without coming to us. So. Um, and, and that's acceptable as a procedure in town. A staff officer who was originally the building inspector or something, that's acceptable? It's, yes, it is. It is? So The state statute's set up. We can only act under our regulations uh, based upon uh, state, state statute so that uh, our regulations are in conformance with state statute. Not everything comes before this body. It's not required to come before us for approval. It depends on the level of approval which is necessary. Right. Well, this should have gone through the proper procedure, I'm thinking, because it takes common sense and smart, intelligent people like yourselves that would look at this and say, this doesn't make sense. It it's borders right on a neighborhood of homes. Who asked all the questions? Where are the minutes that I could that we could go look up to see when that was done, that we would be able to see the minutes of exactly what position the town took in, in determining the who, what, where, when, and why? Because these people were not open and honest. So, so there wouldn't be, I'm um, presuming, minutes of anything because there was no commission, right? There is an application process. That application puts forth certain facts about what the proposal okay. is about. And you've heard people come today to talk about the facts that they've presented. So they present it in an application form. And that form goes to the town. And I'll, I'll let Peter confirm that probably goes to the zoning officer. Zoning officer. And if it is a certain level of issue, they can approve it, deny it, do whatever they want, whatever needs to be right. done in compliance with the zoning regs. And if it's more than that, it comes to this body. So clearly it has taken, I'm going to guess, because I, I don't really know. If you've been told that there was an application, then somebody made the decision, as Peter just indicated, that it didn't rise to that based on what was before them. It didn't rise to some level that needed to come to this body. So this body doesn't need, if you'll just let me finish, this body doesn't need to see everything. But beyond that, I'm going to be... So where's I'm, our protection from so the me, planning and just, zoning is to protect things like this from not happening? So if somebody, we don't see everything, that's what I've just said to you, we don't see everything, that the, that the town staff is that first, that first eye on the application and make some judgment as to whether this is something that needs to be elevated to the to the uh, to the commission. All right. Let now, me. Now, what I want to be careful because this is also going to this is going to change the way we dialogue with you is that we have not seen an application. We have heard that there is likely there's going to probably need to be an application. I was going to and say, so are this, you aware that they are being so this, forced to reapply? So this body needs to be careful on how they talk to you or answer you. This is a public comment period, right? So we're listening to you, but we're not going to exchange information per se. I'm going to be, okay. very, I'm going to be, you know, okay. telling the commission. You should tell me when I'm listening. wrong. Because what? I said you should tell me when I'm wrong if I'm wrong. So, so you've clearly come here with the perception that this body has seen it. It has not. You are probably 
or you've probably been informed correctly that there was an application, but we haven't seen it. It didn't come to that elevation, to that level. I, so I, I so this, this body that. really doesn't know unless they've you know, spoken to people in, in the public or whatever. They don't know much about this. Yeah. Pardon me, right. ask a question. So I'm Dave McCormick again from 143 Garden Street. So we were told initially by Gary that <clears throat> this was a special business unit. It was originally designated as a veterinary hospital. The decision was made that it would be switched like for like for the new tenant. It went from veterinary hospital to kennel. The designation was changed. From my perception, they are not like for like. The veterinary hospital had a couple little runs. This is a parking lot that has up to 20 dogs outside barking from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We moved here three years ago. This was going to be our retirement house. It was beautiful. I live in Old Wethersfield. What's better? It's like a perfect place to live. March, 7 a.m., barking till 7 p.m., dog, 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 all day long. My wife is a nurse. This summer, she occasionally tries to take a night shift. She did it once. She couldn't do it again because she can't sleep in the house in the summertime. It is unbelievable what you have put us through. I know it's not on your watch. I'm clear that you made that quite clear. I don't know if an application was done originally, but when the application comes in, they're implying for something that they're already doing. Why aren't they forced to cease and desist until they get that approval? I just don't understand it. You don't know what you've done to our neighborhood. We listen to this crap all day long. It's unbelievable. She'll call me on the phone and say, can you hear him through the phone? It doesn't stop. Just incessant dog barking all day long. It's like ruined the life in our house. Our perfect house is, we don't want to live there anymore. It's terrible. And I, you guys have to do something about it. It is unbelievable that this just passes through. Somebody makes a decision. The business plan for doggy daycare is bring your dogs to us and they can burn off their steam. They do it by not playing volleyball or shuffleboard. They do it by barking at each other and chasing each other around. I'm really upset about this because it's, as we go to the town council, Gary Evans doesn't return phone calls. I called him four weeks straight and I get his receptionist telling me he's very busy. It's like really frustrating. We're treated like collateral damage to this decision that somebody made and we can't get any answers from anybody. So I, I'm sorry for getting upset, but it's terrible. You've ruined the life at our house. Our kids, when they're home from college, they get up. It's like they can't sleep in the morning because the dogs bark. All of our neighbors, we're all neighbors here. We live it day in, day out. I'm glad. I go to work every day. These guys are home. They have to listen to it all day long. You know, Mrs. Duffy has to leave her house. You know, so thank you for hearing me out, but something needs to be done. I don't know who can do it, but somebody has to correct this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, Joe Duffy, 27 Lincoln Road. And I just want to second in spades what Mr. Williams and Mr. McCormick have said. We are only a reconnaissance and small force. We have petitions because we're not the only ones that hear it. This is a monumental catastrophe. It is somewhat relieving from one point of view that uh, apparently you weren't party to whatever was complicit. But we were led to believe in a, in a meeting with Gary Evans and a two town council meetings uh, where you can't speak, really. It's an odd form of New England town democracy. You can't speak. Uh, but we were led to believe that there was a, a systematic process uh, Mr. Reverend said, I know he's new, we're allowing for that, we want a reasonable solution, but we can't figure out how things got so far. This is a monumental catastrophe, and he's telling us it doesn't qualify as a public nuisance, which is defined in the statutes that have been laid out by Mr. Williams, which we've gone over with the police. There's a police officer up uh, in, what's the name of the little, the cul-de-sac? Off Garden, here. Uh, Garden Court. Garden Court. She hears it up on Garden Court. Her neighbors hear it. We're on Lincoln Road. We're kind of like, you know, uh, oblique to them. It's heard all the way up uh, Garden Street, up to uh, Main Street, down Dorchester. So, I mean, we're, we're not exaggerating. We've been forbearing since April. We thought that it was some kind of a traveling circus, just, you know, staying on the highway. 
It, uh, and the other thing is, with respect to the failure of government by being not, uh, nothing personal to you folks, that the process was underway, that we were certainly willing to, uh, you know, to, to uh, cooperate with, and that uh, these people were in constant contact, uh, you know, with the town manager. One of our neighbors who spoke here at the, the uh, last town council meeting, she called, she got a hold of one of the owners, and, uh, you know, she expressed her concern going on. They have to lock all their windows there. And uh, uh, he, she was told, well, tell the town to hurry up. We were under the impression that the town was, you know, uh, was in command of the process. And nothing is known. We were also promised that they were uh, the, uh, the establishment. We're not against dogs. That's not the issue. Uh, they were going to hire an acoustical engineer to try to do something about this. This is a barrage. There's noise all day, and if it isn't continuous, it's intermittent and loud enough during the intervals uh, to really destroy any kind of concentration that you have. Destroy it. And, it, you know, I don't think anybody, uh, it, it's almost a travesty that, you know, this didn't become a zoning issue earlier. So uh, you're telling us uh, with good faith that you were not informed at all about the scale of this problem. Is that true? That's true. And you weren't informed? So, you so scale of the problem. We, we heard. You heard it, yeah. I personally. But not in detail. But I have no idea whether anybody. Right, not in but, detail. But again, I'm, I heard of it after it's done. We Understood. Didn't, we didn't, it never came to this body. Understood. Well, you know, listening to folks come in with their petitions, it's admirable that all of you on behalf of the public good, you know, ask such detailed questions and think about the implications and the ramifications for neighbors. And that's admirable. I'm wondering as I'm sitting there, why weren't these questions ever asked? Whenever this process began, uh, that began with a premise that a veterinary hospital was the same thing as a dog hotel. It boggles the mind. So we're looking for some guidance from somebody uh, as to how to get the application before you. So, so you, you sh I'm sure you noticed that I, I leaned over and, and asked Peter if he has any knowledge about when the application is coming in. Because largely, we are dependent upon somebody making sure, an sure, application. Sure, sure, understood. So, understood. So the property owner needs to start the process, typically. Um, and, and so nobody here controls when okay. the application comes in and when this whole thing would start either. It is obviously a unique situation, however, right? Yeah, so the, uh, the town manager had said that uh, they were in continuous discussions and that, uh, you know, in the absence of, a, of a, 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 a totally effective solution, that the noise was going to be mitigated. But, you know, uh, the proprietors of the hotel, they've done nothing really in the way of uh, mitigation. And I invite any of you folks to come over. We'll even give you a refreshment. Sit on the patio, pick a place on Dorchester or what, and you will hear... When the, Just, when the application comes in, please. Okay. Yeah, we'll call Village Pizza and have them bring some pizza over. But this is, this is a nightmare for us, as Mr. McCormick, who's new to the neighborhood, has said. And uh, this evening, one of my neighbors is showing her house. There were five cars in front. She already lost two uh, possible buyers uh, because they wrote down on the evaluation the noise because the dogs were barking. So this is quality of life property values, peace of mind, confidence in government, uh, you know, and I, this doesn't speak well for the town manager, and again, allowing for the fact that he's, you know, uh, new, uh, but we think that the, a sizable body of taxpayers, and again, this is not addressed to you per se, they ought to be given priority over a newbie business, and we're not against business, but this was not done right. And I've said to uh, some of the councilmen, the two that were interested, <laughs> I'd say, you know, we're not so much, I'm not so much interested in who made the mistake. I want it stopped. And that's the way most of my neighbors feel. So thank you very much. If thank I you. could just add to what some others have said, if, if an application is submitted, and again, I don't know the details either, but if an application is submitted to us, depending on the type of application, there very well may be a public hearing with an opportunity for you or anyone else in the neighborhood or anywhere else who's interested to speak. So I would encourage you, monitor it, and if there is a public hearing opportunity, yeah. that is November your 6, chance to come. Excuse me, we've been informed November 6, you guys are having a meeting. That okay, that's on. not set yet. They have not submitted an application, so it is likely that that would be the meeting. If you want to 
check in with me, you know, in the next week or two, we'll let you know. I just have one question. You, you think it may not? I, excuse me. You think it may not be the 6th? Uh, it, anything is possible. They're probably going to file an application in the week, and it will stay on the schedule for November 6th. But if they wait another week, we'll miss the deadline for that to legally advertise it and send out neighborhood notices. So uh, if you want to just check with my office, we'll let you, uh, we'll let you know exactly. One procedural question. I, it might have been answered already. But uh, the application is submitted directly to planning and zoning or to the town manager? No, the town manager uh, does not have anything <laughs> to do with that permit process so it'll be filed with the planning department Thank you very much. yep that's that's why you should reach out to Peter okay. right to, to make sure when it comes in and then he'll be able to tell you what the date will be hi I'm Eileen McCormick and I live at 143 Garden Street um, I'm curious if the app if there's an application pending why is he able to even have the operation open everybody else has to put in an application and you're not able to be up and running with 23 dogs running around all day long. It seems like it should have to shut down until it gets approved, doesn't it? I mean, there should That's be a, a question uh, you would probably have to pose to the zoning officer, but um, it has been the practice for violations that they are allowed a period of time to file the application to go through the process to correct the violation. So, um, but you would probably have to speak to him about his decision in that regard. And how long would a violation go on? Could it go on for three more months? Uh, as I said, they're, they're probably going to file an application in the next week or so, so that process will literally be the next three weeks or whenever the November 6th meeting is a month away. Okay, thank yep. you. Yep. Okay, I'm going to try and wrap this up real quick. Um, we have a letter from the town manager stating that they were to respond by, <clears throat> I, I, I can, I'll dig it out on my folder, but loosely allowing me to uh, forget a fact or two. In essence, they've been told to respond by such and such a date, 21 days up with the sign, uh, application, et cetera, et cetera, uh, which turns out to be from a week ago, 44 more days of this nuisance non-compliance and that the date has been set for November 6th. Now, the owner or the manager of this place has played enough games and skullduggery that this has been delayed for, this is now eight months. Says he's going to do stuff, doesn't. Town said they're going, <coughs> they don't. This is going to happen, it doesn't. So in finalizing, the, I have really two points. First of all, Peter, I've known you to be in that position. You're the point of the spear of this committee. So you must know and have the record when they submitted their application, I'm going to say roughly January of 18. I don't know. Uh, I don't that. know either, but we do have um, records. It's got to be on file. Yeah, it was basically a building permit application, so it should be on file. Okay. That's correct. Yep. And someone approved that, whoever that officer at the time was. Who is? And I understand that gentleman is no longer with the town for is, whatever is, reasons. So that, that adds to the right. you know, confusion okay. here, yes. Shady. This doesn't sound real neat. But that application can be found, which brings us to today, where the mayor and the town manager, I guess probably Gary as a town manager, has notified them and has given them time to respond. I'd say roughly three, four weeks we had to wait from our first meeting. It was going to be in 10 days. Yeah. So we waited three or four weeks for them to respond. And now we're being asked to wait another 44 days for them to get it all together. That would only bring us to the November 6th meeting. God knows what's going to prevail and for how long. So what our position is, and it's been written to Mr. Morrison, their first application was, for lack of proper vernacular, null and voided, correct? It's not applicable. It's not acceptable. Otherwise, why would they be? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, oh, you wouldn't? Then why are they have to resubmit the entire so, so application to include, which they didn't have, the plot plan, mm -hmm. to include that they did fence in when there was no fencing there before. In fact, fencing was denied. So there was no, oh, 
they had it then, we'll do it now. That doesn't I, exist. I, I'm not going to, I don't agree with some of the things you just said there, but just to, you know, get to Good, the bottom line we'll, is if, if you'll we'll let me, if you let me answer you your question. Prove otherwise. Would, so. you like, would you like to so answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, so the issue basically boils down to the activities that they're doing outside were never approved by anybody. This commission, the zoning officer, um, the use of the property, whether you agree or not, uh, veterinary uh, clinics as well as dog daycare centers are operated under state licensing for kennels. So that's how it all came down to it's a like for like type of business. However, the outside activity, which is creating all of the noise, was never approved by anybody. So that is the activity that they will be applying for. Okay. So having said that, they don't have a valid application and a valid approval. That is correct. Okay. I requ we requested, forgive me, we requested a, a week ago from Charles Morrison, who told me he, I had to drag it out like a dentist takes out an old tooth, that he is the individual who is responsible to issue a cease and desist order. That is correct. Is that correct? That is absolutely we correct. We made that complaint one week ago. And it's not the town manager, so. I didn't say. I right. said Charles Morrison. Correct. And if he was here tonight, as I believe he should be, in spite of what your feelings are, um, where is that? We have a formal request in writing okay. to Charles Morrison for a cease and desist order. If they don't have a valid application to the extent that they have to represent and answer all the questions, they should not be allowed to have dogs out. That's our request for cease and desist. No dogs out side. We demand, how do you like that, huh? There you go. We're asking f where and how and why. Eight months is long enough. For, well, let's say it's 40 days more from now is not a fair request from the town. For yep. just a meeting, no resolutions. He, they should not be allowed to operate. They don't have a valid application, and it's being resubmitted. So until then, we strongly urge that a cease and desist order, no dogs allowed outside until that process of application, following all the rules of public discourse, et cetera, et cetera, is allowed. That's not an unfair request. And you have made that request? I you. have. Okay. So we, excuse me. We have. Okay. I don't do anything more than anybody else, except for I'm Irish and I blab. <clears throat> I want to, we need to know why and how we have, a week ago, the nuisance complaint? Yeah. We've made a formal nuisance complaint and they have not heard. Okay. You'd have to take that up with him. I can't speak to okay. why he hasn't responded okay. to you. but so. He has issued an order to them, so just so in the case you don't know that. Say that again, please. He has issued an order to them. Uh, I don't know. Who he? What, Charles? Charles. I don't know what he calls the order. I don't know if it's a cease and desist or what it was, but he has issued to them uh, under his authority uh, an enforcement action. So um, I don't know if that was in response to your request or it was done before that, but nevertheless, that has been, uh, there is an enforcement action in, in uh, operation right now. Just point of order. If he takes a, as a zoning officer, if he makes a comment, uh, uh, files a complaint, what, shouldn't you guys be copied on it so you're cognizant of what's going on? He makes so many orders on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. Uh, they do get uh, reports from him uh, summarizing his activity so that they know what's going on, but uh, they usually don't rise to the, he is directly supervised by the town manager, so the town manager uh, has you all just of that. answered a question. Yep. So if I go back to Gary tomorrow, which I will, mm -hmm. and just say this was requested, um, we've not heard back. Okay. We'd like to know what where that stands. Sure. I think it's a fair. <laughs> I think it's a very fair request. Mm -hmm. And in essence, layman's language, not what you would gentlemen and ladies know. They're there unfairly operating. They're there 
and they're operating unfairly, not what was requested, not what was submitted, and not supposedly what was approved. I don't think there's any argument about that. And this okay. this we, commission or, or the staff that. or anybody is uh, is disagreeing with that, and that's why there's an enforcement action. And okay. It so I, I don't think, and I'm speaking for me, I don't have the right to speak for my neighbors, I don't think it's unfair that an immediate cease and desist order should be allowed, should be issued and um, enforced until this final resolution takes place. I thank you very, very much for listening. I apologize for going long. Uh, it's been terribly frustrating on all our families. Our quality of life is stinko. And that's not why we, this is not the weather seal that I know to allow this kind of stuff. Now, he's in a commercial application area, but he's right here where there's three or four homes away ruining our quality of life. I don't want him shut down. I want him to build four walls and a roof in half the space of what he's got and doesn't need dogs, 23 of which I have pictures and have showed the AOC, 23 dogs out at a time, just running and barking and that's not right. Thank you very much. Thank you. One, one thing I guess just briefly is that, you know, because we are in a position where we may be receiving an application and will be expected to review it in a open-minded and unbiased way. Um, we probably appeared more dispassionate and stone-faced than you would have liked in terms of reacting to your statements, but I think just by virtue of the fact that it's an ongoing enforcement action that is outside of our jurisdiction but is likely to lead to something that is going to be coming here, we're not really allowed to say or do anything that would indicate that we are prejudging or predisposed or biased one way or the other. So, um, you know, the, the fact that we were just kind of sitting here listening doesn't mean that, you know, there is no sympathy. It just means that we have to remain neutral until there's a formal process initiated with us. May I ask a question? Is there anything you, you would have us provide to you that would indicate uh, what type of communication we've attempted or people we've spoken to or phone call? You get the phone, phone call from Gary or from the police. Is there anything we can do to just, just provide information? I'm not asking you to take a stance or, or anything. I, I think Probably at the time there is an application before us and there's some kind of appropriate forum for, you know, the applicant to make their presentation and you to provide whatever additional information you think is appropriate to us to evaluate their application. I would, I would wait till then rather than giving it to us ahead of time because, you know, frankly, somebody could say that you were poisoning the well by, you know, sending it to us and then how could they have had a fair hearing when we've we've seen all this? Yeah. Very good. Thanks for joining us today. Um, do we have oh, do you have? No. Okay. So do you have something besides going on with the staff report? Just uh, in terms of um, staff reports, um, we have started the parking study. The committee met, uh, sort of kick off that process. I did give you a copy of the link to the survey, so please um, take some time and uh, fill out the survey so that we can have a, uh, a, re a good response uh, to the survey. So that you should have gotten something that looks like this with a QR code, If for those of you who know how to use a QR code. Um, <laughs> g give it a shot, see if it gets you to the survey, but please, uh, visit the survey and uh, fill it out and, and encourage other people to do that. I've also given you a copy of the uh, this month's uh, planning and economic development uh, report, uh, just to give you a, a handle on what's going on in town and what we've been doing. There's a bunch of plugs at the very bottom under other activity for the Planning and Zoning Commission. It makes, makes you guys look uh, wonderful and that you're doing all sorts of great things for the town. So. Um, that's that's right exactly Just put that in bigger type there you go there you go <laughs> underline and highlighted and yeah. 
And then uh, the only thing that I, I forgot to add to the agenda, and it's that time of year, but I did hand out uh, a copy of the uh, proposed uh, 2020 Planning and Zoning Commission uh, meeting uh, schedule. Um, there's a couple of uh, uh, scratch outs there for a couple of dates that had to be changed because of the various Monday holidays. So if you want to take a quick look at it, um, and then if uh, if we can get a vote to approve the schedule for next year. The only possible change, Peter, was on November 3rd, I think, is um, yeah, it's election, election day. day. Really? Okay. Other than that, everything else seems clear. Yeah, and they'll be using this for the... So let's move that to um, November 4. But everything else seems balanced. Even um, if you look real closely, even uh, March 17th, that looks okay? <laughs> okay. I... So if anyone wants to make a motion to... Oh, so moved. I'll second. Okay. Thank you both. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. And then the only other thing is just um, so you are aware, um, staff did issue a... I'm not sure if it was technically a cease and desist order because we um, had, to, had to take a rapid response, but the uh, Webb Dean <laughs> Stevens Museum construction project is underway uh, unbeknownst to us they took the excavated materials and hauled it out into the uh, woods Ooh. behind the museum which is residentially zoned um, without our knowledge um, so that created a bit of a firestorm um, our first concern was obviously uh, if there were any archaeological uh, uh, sensitive areas that they were uh, traipsing over. Um, we did check with the State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, they joined us on the site, uh, so there were not those concerns, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they did expand uh, the areas subject to the construction activity beyond what we had approved. Um, they are viewing this as a temporary uh, situation, um, but I wanted to make sure uh, you were aware of it uh, in case you heard something um, out there in the community. So so we are working through that with them uh, right now. The contractor. The contract, this, the uh, excavation contractor. How, how are you, you going to do it when they, you're not talking about the area they fill between the fire station parking lot and. No, this is back out in the woods. There's, okay. a, there's a sort of a trail yeah. back there. Okay. They went back through there and yeah. back in the pine trees, uh, so. Yeah, I walked through there. Yeah. Crushed rock in there and all that. Oh, yeah, so. And they can't, yeah, I wondered about it when I was walking through about a month and a half ago. Oh, well, some of that was, no, this is farther back uh, in yeah, the woods. I they could do Way it back, we, yeah. The one you were looking at, it was allowed. Yeah. That was from the um, archeological, but this is way down. Way back. Way in the back. That's yeah, it's huge back there. So just I wanted you to be aware of that. And how is that temporary? So they um, are trying to work it out. The uh, erosion and sediment control plan uh, under this project was approved by the <coughs> Wetlands Commission. So they are um, making them go back to the Wetlands Commission to uh, get that uh, approved as part of their uh, plan. Uh, if it was in any way sensitive, archaeological, or otherwise, we probably would have had it come back to this commission, but in this case, because the ENS was approved by the Wetlands Commission, we're making it go back through uh, that process to rectify that. So um, when they put the foundation, when they pour the foundation within the next couple of weeks, they're gonna bring that material back and use it to backfill. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the temporary nature. Um, anything beyond that um, is, is still up in the air, so. Okay. Thanks. But there's a lot of material. So I'm not sure all of it's gonna be used for the backfill. They may have to remove some of it from the site. Compact it pretty hard. Yeah. All right. Um, anything about the uh, future applications that we have here? Uh, no, we uh, actually one or two more came in. Um, so we're gonna potentially accommodate them at that meeting. So you will have 
a few items uh, on the agenda for uh, the next meeting. <coughs> okay. Motion to adjourn. Thank so you. moved. I'll move. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you.